try. Blue coat, Baffert, buttons, brokers, dry and move, my burn is made by Heaven's Hill, Bombay, dry and sapphire. We're Mother's Ruin. We're performing a cabaret about the history of gin. We've been touring the show around Australia for about a year now, and we're so thrilled to be performing it in Scotland where they make so much gin that we love. Get drunk like it's a sin, yeah. Headless like Bolin. Cause I've drunk every gin, yeah. Hi there. Hi. Welcome to the Royal Dick. My name's Paul. Maeve. Libby. Hi, Hi there, ladies. Hi. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to taste some gins yes. from around Scotland. We'll be uh, having a little neat nip of, uh, of each of the gins. Um, and what that'll do is that'll give us the opportunity to get a real, real idea of the flavours that we're, we're, we're going to be dealing with yeah. and the kind of nice. flavours that that go into the gins here. So yeah, well, you guys have come to Scotland obviously for uh, your show fringe. at the Fringe, absolutely. We have Mother's Ruin, a cabaret about gin, conveniently. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Amazing we've been brought together. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it weird we just bumped into each other like that? <laughs> well, I mean, I thought that we had a lot of distilleries in Australia, and we do, I think we've got about 100 different gins. Yeah. But then we heard you had the same amount here, and there's much smaller place. Tiny little, <laughs> yes. There's about, I think there's some uh, 100, over 100 gins and yeah. 50 distilleries in Scotland. I mean, we're such a tiny place, you can kind of throw a stone and hit a distillery <laughs> at the moment here. Yeah. I mean, that's what drew us to Scotland, other than the Fringe, of obviously. Of course, of course. Um, was the chance to try some really beautiful gin. Yes, well, we've got a, a little selection of some uh, Scottish gin mm -hmm. to have a wee look at, yes. We've gone kind of, we've gone Edinburgh and Glasgow and, and, oh, and cool. really far north. So, oh, good, we're doing a little tour. Yes, We thought absolutely. you might fly us out there on a helicopter, but um, this will do. Well, I, the helicopter's <laughs> in, the, in the garage at the moment. Okay. But, uh, we'll go to that later. Yeah, <laughs> so first up, we're going to taste a lovely gin from Glasgow called Ooh. Macker Gin. Macker basically meaning exactly maker. It's uh, in Scottish, as you can tell there. We, we really try and make the words very, very different when we... <laughs> Go, go into Scotland. Um, yes, so uh, there are uh, seven different botanicals in there, including licorice, you've got rosemary in there, loads of juniper as well. And the guy specially designed the bottle, so this is a very unique bottle, and each side represents one of the botanicals in the gin. Oh, very nice. Now, this is a, um, it's a distilled gin, um, which means that what they do is they make a lot of it uh, with the botanicals all in at the same mm -hmm. time, but then they add um, a couple of other distillates in there to add the flavours in. So uh, we'll have Let's a little a taster. Go. Yeah, definitely. I haven't been to Glasgow yet. It's a beautiful city, we which is, you very rarely hear that coming from someone in Edinburgh, but no, Glasgow's, yeah. Glasgow's a lovely place. Yes, Who makes absolutely. the best gin, Edinburgh or Glasgow? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't possibly say Edinburgh. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Right, first thing we want to do is we want to get a good nose because mm. we want to really, really get an idea of what the botanicals are doing um, in the aroma there. Uh, what do you guys get off of that? Oh, definitely like rosemary and licorice. Isn't it loads? <laughs> no, but what you get is that really, really super intense yeah. uh, aromas, don't you? There's mm. a lot of pine mm. from the juniper in there. Mm. You've got a lot of that, I think, rosemary as well. Yeah, but it's do. really very intense. It's kind of funky and that's mm. what, yeah. what we... Doesn't smell like it's going to be a subtle one. No, definitely not. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then as well, yeah. you get that the heat of the spice in there. You mm. really get yeah, the, the yeah, dry yeah. of the citrus, and the rosemary gives a tiny, mm. tiny little bit of sweetness. I mean, what are you guys getting? Yeah, I can really get the rosemary actually. Mm. So mm. this is a real big funky gin, and actually their perfect serve, weirdly enough, is um, a big bit of green chilli within with your tonic. So the next gin we're going to look at, uh, we're going up the coast to Caithness on the northeast coast of Scotland, and uh, we're going to be tasting a little bit of rock rose, if you wouldn't mind like doing the, the honours for us. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely old earthenware bottle, uh, very much in the uh, style of uh, old Jennifer bottles. Mm. Uh, so this guy uh, is made with um, loads and loads of different botanicals, um, but the main thing about it is that the botanicals are sourced from within 15 miles of the still. So really, really old school, so mm. you're not going to be finding what you find in a lot of modern gins, which is citrus and spices from mm. all over the mm. world. I think so. that's the thing about the new kind of gin, genaissance, as mm -hmm. you so punnily called it, oh, yeah. is that it, people aren't just using, you know, whatever citrus they can get their hands on mm -hmm. or importing stuff in bulk, they're using 
native botanicals. So I think that that's one of the things that we love the most yeah. about it is that you can go to a distillery and actually taste the gin of that place. Yeah. So what the guys have done here, as I say, is they've uh, they've gone about and they've got things from within 15 miles of the yeah. distillery. And then um, how a lot of the botanicals get into the gin is using uh, vapour distillation, which yes. basically means you have a basket full of yes. lovely soft flavours and the <laughs> alcohol vapour kind of travels yeah. up, kind of passes through the thing, goes, hey, how's it going? And then yeah. picks up flavour and goes goes away. So you, Well, uh, we drink a great deal of Four Pillars, the Australian gin, and they distill theirs through baskets of oranges. Yes. And then they turn the oranges into gin marmalade. It's... So oh, can, I know, right? It's Just spread a, a little marmalade on your absolutely. breakfast. Absolutely. Top to bottom yeah. gin. That's the, that's <laughs> yeah. the dream, really, yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. an entire gin meal. So this is the rock rose. This is Rudy oh, Olorosi. Oh, I'm going to like this one. Oh, that's I can lovely. tell already. Mm. Has no offence, Glasgow. So what, <laughs> what are you guys getting off this? It smells sweeter. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not an expert. I just drink lots of it. Hey, mm, it's, it's definitely softer. Hasn't yeah. it? It's got a real kind of earthy tone mm. to it. Mm. The juniper in there is Scottish. Now, the wonderful, again, another wonderful thing about gin and juniper is it's really like grapes. So depending on where you get your juniper from, it's going to give you a different flavour. So mm. a lot of uh, distillers will use uh, juniper from really far away, maybe Italy, Bulgaria, sort of drier countries where you get a more intense flavour. Yeah. But your Scottish junipers, because it's mainly raining here, um, it, they're a lot more yeah. moist. There's a lot more water. You hadn't noticed. Hadn't noticed at all. No. Yeah. So let's get our, let's get our, um, our, our mouth feel done. We'll get right. that little mm. sip. We'll get it round our mouth. Mmm. I really like that one. <laughs> Where do I go? How do I get here? Which road do I drive? So, yeah, basically, second town on the left and straight on till morning. Great. All right, we don't need to finish the fringe, do we? No, we'll just go. I'm going to go and join these people. Finally, we're going to go a little bit back in time. We're going to um, back the. In time. I was going to go. Brr, brr, brr. <laughs> Yes, Sorry. all the way back to 1947, oh. the birth year of not only Pickering's gin, but the Edinburgh, Edinburgh Fringe. Fringe. Yes, absolutely. Lovely. That's perfect. So this is a London dry style gin. Now, unlike a lot of modern gins, because this is very much not a modern gin, mm. we're not looking at the kind of flavour profile that you would expect, or even the aromas you expect. We, we look for a lot of juniper, we look for a lot of citrus mm. in our gins. Um, because we balance it, of course, with tonic. I mean, yeah. who doesn't love a gin and tonic? Um, but Well, indeed. <laughs> but way, way back when, of course, tonic was a far, far different thing. So yes. a dry gin in the 1940s really wouldn't have worked as well. So what they did with this is, let's have a little... Let's, uh, let's have a little nose, is it's far, Ooh. far more fragrant. Mm, eh? Spicy. Isn't it? You've oh, got... that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's quite spicy. Yeah, a lot of spice in there. So this is finished with a bit of cinnamon. You've got cardamom, you've got cloves. Yeah. So we've done a couple of tasters, so I'm feeling our palates are pretty much... We're, we're yeah, down with the gin at this point. Go, yeah. So we'll just have our, our... Get our taste for the mouthfeel, get it yeah. rolled around. Mm -hmm. And already... Super spice. Hugely different, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that star anise? Um, there's anise and fennel in there. Yeah. Doesn't it come out massively? Yeah. In? So. Oh, wow. It's really different, huh? Yeah. Because sometimes when all the botanicals are in, the, the ability to just differentiate one, mm. you get more of a feel. Like this one, you get a sense of them. Yeah. And you get yeah. a sense of the mix together. But this, you taste it, and you can actually taste the individual spices in yeah. there. It's yeah. beautiful. What this is a brilliant example of is that is the, is the openness, is the, is the number of flavours and different things you can yeah. do with gin. Mm. I mean, I've had this. This goes beautifully, in fact, with a bit of ginger ale Ooh. and some oh, uh, lime. Great. It's very nice. It's absolutely fantastic. But I think as well, it's yeah, people think of it have or have historically thought of it as either like the standard drink over the bar or something your nan drinks. Yeah. And they yeah, don't get excited about it. But it's a bit like the way people who are really into wine get into it and they visit all the wineries. Definitely. We do that with distilleries now and we yeah. do that with gin bars. And it's a it's a whole way to kind of navigate drinking that's mm. not just about getting on the booze and throwing it back, but it's actually, yeah, about finding all the differences and getting into it, and it totally changes the experience of drinking it, I yeah. think. Like, yes. we, people say, aren't you sick of gin? Like, you're performing this show, you're drinking it all the time, and I'm like, no, because the more we do the show, the more interesting gins we try, the more places we get to go and people we get to meet who are really into it, and, yeah, I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> not rules. sick of it yet, not yes. sick of it yet. It's actually, that's the whole reason we actually don't, don't sing. Yeah, we're not performing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you so, so much for coming. Thank you. And, thank you, uh, Paul. Have a lovely, lovely day. It was lovely to meet lovely you. Lovely to meet you too. Thank you, Paul. All right. We're just a... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. All right. Let's get some Scottish gins in there. I've had Arbuckle, Edinburgh, Dunley's View and Loch Ness, Lone Wolf, Shetland Reel, Pickering for Buttonless, Macca's, Esker, Averbo and Crossbill, Cromans, Blackwood, Duffy's, Dornick, Eden Mill, Rock Rose, Sterling, T. Smith and Seagrass, Kintyre, Kirkavar, Caron and Old Ross. We drunk every gin, yeah, we drunk every gin. Don't even begin, yeah, you can never win. Cause we've drunk all your gin, yeah, we've drunk.